In this video, I'm going to show you how I fixed DC offset in Audacity using a high pass filter. So let's go. Hey friends, Mike Adams here with Audacity Training. Check out this screen that I've got open here. This looks weird, doesn't it? It looks like a stereo track, but only one channel got put into the uh, track. But that's not true. This is a mono track. And what you're seeing right here is a good case of DC offset. This is what DC offset can look like. Let's talk about that before we get started. You see the center line here on our track is the zero dB line. It's also the zero DC voltage line. DC voltage is direct current. There's no frequency involved in it. It's just a voltage with theoretically no oscillations in it. Well, here's what happened with this track. Some friends asked me to convert an old cassette tape into a digital format. Remember cassette tapes? They look like this. They have this little thing on them here and you know, there's a literal tape in it. And um, that was all the rage back in the 70s, 60s, well, maybe late 60s. Yeah, late 60s, uh, through the 70s. That was all the rage, cassette tapes. There were also eight track tapes and four track tapes and reel to reel tapes. And I still have my old reel to reel tape recorder, believe it or not. Anyway, I digress. When I exported this tape from an analog signal to a digital signal, and then I imported it into Audacity, this waveform is what it gave me. This is DC offset. And if we zoom in here a little bit, I'm going to uh, do that right now. Zoom in just a bit here. Maybe that's far enough. And if we look at this first song right here, we can see that this area right here is DC offset. I have a positive DC voltage that's been induced on this waveform that raised the DC voltage or the DC offset by this amount right here. And you can see it wherever there's silence. Now, some of that is tape hiss, okay? So whenever you convert a analog tape into something else, you're gonna get some tape hiss. I could, in theory, work on removing some of that tape hiss, but I'm not gonna do that. I better be careful how I say tape hiss. It sounds like I might be saying something else. Tape hiss, tape hiss, that's what I'm saying. So this area right here then is, is the DC offset. In this case, it's a positive DC offset. This could as just as well be below that zero dB line, but this one happens to be above it. And it's above it by that amount right there that you see. Now in this particular instance, the recording looks okay. There's no clipping. I suppose it could be usable this way. Sometimes DC offset is gentle enough to where it doesn't actually clip the audio. But what this does is it introduces a noise component throughout the entire project. And you can see that here. I'm going to zoom in again just a little bit more. And you can see that right here, there's noise being introduced as a result of our DC offset. So I'm going to select through this right here. And then I'm going to come up to the loop function button. And you'll see it puts these little like bookends right here. And then if I click once up here in the timeline, it's going to loop through that particular uh, piece of audio. And as we do it, I want you to look over here at the playback meter toolbar. And let's take a look at what this level actually does. So in addition to being able to hear a hum, you can definitely hear a, a low level hum. It also is a level of about a negative 10 dB, negative 11 dB, somewhere in there. That's not good. That's not good at all. So we need to eliminate that. We need to reduce that as much as we can in order to get this track back to where it's more usable. So I'm going to press the space bar to stop that loop for right now. And then I'm going to come over here onto the track header. I'm going to click once and I'm going to duplicate this track. I'm on a Mac, so it's Command D. If you're on Windows, it's Control D. Now that I've got that track duplicated, I want to mute that top track and I want to minimize that top track just to get it out of the way. And then let's enlarge this one right here just a little bit so we can see it a little bit better. The reason that I duplicated the track is because what we're about to do is destructive. And if you ever want to go back to that original track, it's a good idea to duplicate it. You can also back up your project if you want or save your project off in another drive or someplace else if you prefer that method. 
But whenever I'm going to do something destructive, I try to duplicate the track at the very minimum so that I always have the original track to go back to. And again, what we're about to do is destructive. So I've got the uh, track selected. In fact, let's unselect that top track. And now that I've got this track selected, I'm going to come up to the Effect drop down menu. And I'm going to go to EQ and filters. And I'm going to bring up a high pass filter. And so right now, my high pass filter is set at, nine, at a frequency of 90 hertz and a roll off of 24 dB per octave. That's a pretty steep roll off. A high pass filter eliminates low frequency uh, tones from your recording. It's always good at, the, at a very minimum to at least run a high pass filter on your work because it gets rid of bassy sounds in the room. You know, if you've got an air conditioner running or someone thumps the desk, it helps to eliminate some of those low end sounds, those low frequency sounds. Those aren't good in our recording. They don't really serve any purpose. So just as a side note, no charge, I recommend at the very minimum when you're doing equalization that you uh, use a high pass filter just to get rid of those unused frequencies. There's a lot more that could be said there on EQing, but that's all I'm going to say for, for now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower this frequency down to 20 hertz. And I'm going to make the roll off a lot steeper. Let's go 48 dB per octave, which is going to be extremely steep. Now, when I click apply, what you're going to see is it's going to apply this high pass filter and it's going to eliminate or reduce uh, DC offset. So I'm going to click apply. And just like that, our track has come down. That DC offset has been removed. There's no more DC voltage being imposed upon uh, this waveform. And it looks a lot better, doesn't it? Now, if we come up here to our looped section and I click once, take a look now at the meter toolbar and you'll see the difference. It was peaking around a minus 10 or so. Let's see what it's doing now. So now it's hovering around a 48, maybe a 46. That's negative 48, negative 46. You know, that it's better. I mean, if I wanted to spend time with this again, I could possibly remove a little bit more of that tape hiss. Tape hiss. <laughs> but uh, I'm not going to do that right now. We're just going to call this good. Now I'm going to press the space bar to pause this. And I'm going to optimize or maximize that top track again. I'm going to go up to view, track size, and I'm going to fit to height. So you can see what happened here. That DC offset was removed, and in removing that DC offset, you can see that some of the noise was cleaned up as well, and it's back to the zero dB line or the center line on our track, which is where we want it. We can do more with this now. We can normalize it. We can use loudness normalization on it without the same fear of clipping the audio that we had when DC voltage was induced on our waveform. So now what I'm going to do is let's unmute that top track. Let's solo that top track. And let's look at the noise level again there. When I click in our inside of our loop, again, keep your eye on that playback meter. And let me click on this. And now let's go back to the bottom one. One more time. It cleaned it up a lot. It didn't completely eliminate the noise. Again, it's a audio tape. There's hiss on audio tapes. So I want to leave it there because it's kind of nostalgic in a way. And this audio sounds really good when I play through the rest of it. I can't play it for you because I don't have their permission to do that. But using a high pass filter is a good way to get rid of DC offset. And you think, well, why does that work? Well, think about it. We are cutting off low frequencies. Again, let me select this track. Let me go back up to our effect drop down menu. My mouse is kind of my mouse is kind of jumping around. And let's go back to our high pass filter. Remember we set this at 20 hertz. We're telling Audacity basically everything below 20 hertz, I want you to cut out. I want you to get rid of everything below 20 hertz. Now DC, remember is 0 hertz. So what we basically did when we applied a high-pass filter is we got rid of any 
low frequency offset that was in that original waveform. And when I did that, it eliminated that DC offset and returned the center of our waveform back to the quiet point or very near the quiet point. And that's one way that you can fix DC offset is by using a high pass filter. So that's all I wanted to show you in this video. I thought it was interesting. This took me by surprise. When I imported that cassette tape into Audacity and I saw that uh, DC offset, you know, I was very surprised. I've never seen it that bad before. But there it was. And somewhere in the process of converting that analog tape signal to a digital signal, this DC voltage was introduced probably from the cheap little uh, conversion unit that I'm using uh, that converts it from the analog signal to an MP3. Anyway, I was glad that this happened because it gave me a chance to talk about DC offset with you. I know I've talked about it in at least one other video in the past, but this kind of drives it home. This is a good example of what it looks like and how to fix it. So I'll let you go. And until next time, y'all take care.